Welcome back to Jay vs. Horror. I'm your host, Jay Wall. And today, guys, we are taking on my top 10 horror films of 2020. Guys, we are on our last two steps to naming the top 10 horror films of the last two decades. And that show comes out January 1st, 2021. A new day, a new year. All right, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. And check out our Patreon page. The link for that is in the description below. For as little as $2 a month, you can become one of our Horror Hound patrons. And that means two things. One, you're going to get a lot of love on this show. And secondly, you're going to make it onto our Patrons Picks show. We're going to be doing that once a month. All of our patrons will get to choose a review that we'll take on or any horror topic they want us to discuss. All right, horror fans, let's get started. At number 10, I have Spontaneous. It's an American science fiction romantic black comedy horror film written and directed by Brian Duffield in his directorial debut. It stars Katherine Langford, Charlie Plummer, Harley Law, and Piper Perabu. When students in their high school begin explicably exploding, seniors Mara, played by Katherine Langford, and Dylan, played by Charlie Plummer, and others navigate in a world where each moment may be their last. As spontaneous explosions continue unexplained, an unexpected romance blossoms between Mara and Dylan, who discover that when tomorrow is no longer promised, they can finally start living for today. I can't say that everyone's going to love this film, but I enjoyed it a lot, guys. Basically, what we have here are a bunch of high school students who start to spontaneously combust. No one understands why. They can't explain what's different about this one small town that makes all the teenage kids in it explode. What Spontaneous does very well is it sets up all of its characters very nicely. And then it puts a timer around their neck that you can't see. And one by one, they explode. You never know who's going to die. You never know when they're going to die. At times, a death may accidentally cause other deaths because that person may be driving or doing something that's dangerous to other people. And then all of a sudden, they explode. It's definitely a movie for teenagers, for the young crowd. But I'll say this. Sometimes, some of those films can transcend that audience. And they reach out on a different level. I think Spontaneous has a lot of emotion. It has some great effects. And it has a very interesting story. Inside that story is a message about how to live your life. You know, don't be scared. Don't be afraid because tomorrow is not promised. All right, horror fans. Let's take a look at the trailer for my number 10 pick, Spontaneous. Hey, Mara. This is the guy. This is uh, pick Dylan. Ew! You sent her a pic? No, that would be gross. He sent me pictures of Richards. <laughs> That's worse. Can't keep me down any longer. Tell me something, just for me. First time I saw you, Jed tried wrapping his arm around you. <laughs> it was a good first impression. Exploding like a supernova. He's all over me! Caitlin was cute, airy, hardly a reason to pop like a zit. What happened? Caitlin exploded. What? Like, like a bomb? No, like a balloon? What? Will I get these back? Do you want these back? And the hell are they gonna let us out of here? When they know it's not gonna happen again. Then what's gonna happen again? It happened again a lot. You know you can't keep a good girl down. Listen, everyone's scared. Duh, duh. Kids are literally blowing up. I think they're doing tests on us. What's your name for the record, please? You can ask my lawyer. I have a moment for you where I knew I liked you. You like me? I'm just so glad I didn't explode all over you. <laughs> Watch me run, I'm fast like lightning, run, go, run, I'm going on. What's gonna happen to us? I'm never stopping, never stopping, never stopping. E.T. Hell yeah. Was canceled. Well, at least now you can't say things were so much harder back in my day. <gasps> You're right. You have a way worse. 
At number nine, Saint Maud. It's a British psychological horror film written and directed by Rose Glass in her feature directorial debut. The story follows hospice nurse Maud, portrayed flawlessly here by Morphid Clark. Maud is a recent convert to Roman Catholicism who becomes obsessed with a former dancer in her care, played by Jennifer Ely, believing she must save her soul. Now, Maud is kind of a crazy, weird film. There's not a ton of great effects. There's not a ton of horror until you get to the end. And then there's a couple scenes that will rattle your bones. Most of the film is just watching Maud come undone. She is extremely crazy. <laughs> I know that's not a clinical term, but I think you'll understand what I mean when you take a look at St. Maud. And with that being said, let's take a little peek at the trailer for St. Maud. <laughs> Hi, are you Maud? Yes. Dear God, it takes nothing special to mop up after the decrepit and the dying. Can you feel that? Yep, yep, yep. But to save a soul, that's quite something. Bless Amanda's body and bless her mind, which is shrouded in darkness. When you pray, do you get a response? It's like he's physically in me. It's how he guides me. And he's just there. <laughs> he's everywhere. Maud is looking out for me, you see. To save my soul, if I understand correctly. <laughs> You must be the loneliest girl I've ever seen. I just want to see you loosen up. I've got more important things on my mind. Ah! Maud, he isn't real. This is life and death on another level. Oh yes, of course. Never waste your pain. Never waste your pain. At number eight, open 24 hours. It's an American slasher film written and directed by Patrick Reynolds. It stars Vanessa Grazzi and Brendan Fletcher. After setting her serial killer boyfriend on fire, a paranoid, delusional woman gets a job at an all-night gas station. Now, that's putting it kind of simple for this film. Basically, what happens is this woman realizes that her boyfriend is a serial killer. She actually watches him kill several women and then decides one day that her best option is to burn her house down with him in it asleep. Of course, this does not kill him. And now she's in a world of hurt after being released from prison for her part in these killings. She's kind of getting the stink guy from everyone, if you can imagine why. She's also having some pretty bad delusions. But in order to get her life back together, she takes a job at this 24-hour backwoods all-night gas station. And as the night progresses, we see her friends, some customers, and some other random people get picked off by a maniacal killer. This is a great New Age slasher, and it does something kind of fun where... It keeps you in suspense about what's actually happening for the first two acts, but then gives you the answer in the third act so you can have fun with what's actually happening. This one is totally for all the fans out there who complain about how they haven't made a good slasher in such a long time. I think this one, Terrifier, they're starting to make a comeback, guys. Let's take a look at the trailer for Open 24 Hours. supposed to rain tonight. Mary, we talked about this. You can't freak out every time it rains. This place is in the middle of nowhere. Are you sure you want to work here? I don't really have a choice. A rain drops. So many rain drops. Mm -hmm. 
If you're a gas market, this is Mary. Do you like watching people die? I know it about you and your boyfriend. I'm sure you're going to be carrying that around with you your whole life. I'm not crazy, you know. The file says paranoid and delusional. My boyfriend was uh, James Lincoln Fields. Killed like 30 women. 35. He's still alive, right? Seven, rent a pal and guys I wanted to put this one even higher but there's so many great films on this list that it fell down to seven this is the one that snuck up behind me and hit me in the back of the head rent a pal is an American thriller horror film written and directed by Joe Stevenson it stars Will Wheaton and one of the best new villain performances of the entire year it also stars Brian Landis Falcons Kathleen Brady and Amy Rutledge. In rent a we have a lovable loser who's trying video dating during the 90s. He's getting scammed by this company pretty hard. They're charging him a large amount of money for videos that he really can't use to find any happiness. Now one day while he's inside this place, he finds a video called rent a And the guy on the video is played by Will Wheaton. His name is Andy, and he only wants to help. He only wants to be your friend. But as the movie goes on, we see that Andy's intentions are much darker and that the entire video is some kind of subconscious experiment. rent pal will get under your skin. It will keep you thinking about it for days to come. Our main character here, David, slips further and further under the spell of Andy. And I think if you pay attention to the video as David is watching it, you'll see all these weird little cues like the phone ringing in the background at specific times things are happening inside the video other than the conversation that's being had what's fun about rent pal is that David is apparently the specific personality type that this video was made for because he watches it over and over and over and you watch it with him and you see that he starts to build a conversation with something that's already happened it's a very interesting film it's hard to explain go check it out guys let's take a look at the trailer for rent a pal Hi. I'm Carla. Hi. My name is Mary. Hi. Uh, I'm Susan. Hi. I'm David. I'm 40 years young. <laughs> and um, I live with my mother. It's okay. Good night, Mom. I'm looking for a deep connection. Someone I can give myself to. Completely. Hi, I'm Andy. Thanks for being here today. I have been waiting for this moment for what feels like forever. To friendship. We're gonna get to know each other. Friendship. Talk about whatever you want. But more than anything, we're gonna have some fun. Too bad. And hopefully, yeah. it's the start of a beautiful relationship. What do you say? Sounds weird, Andy. Hi, uh, I'm Lisa. You want to hang out tomorrow night? I'd, I'd love to. Maybe someone will come around that can help you out a little. I thought we could tell each other everything. You just need to open yourself up to it. I thought we were best friends. Nothing like a little friendly competition. Right, pal? That's what friends are for. You're just drunk with infatuation for some cute girl to be there for each other. We don't need her. We have each other. When all the chips are down. You've taken everything from me. Andy! Andy! Break up! 
That's why I'm here for you, pal. At number six, VFW. It's an American horror thriller film written and directed by Joe Bagos. It stars Stephen Lang, William Sadler, Martin Cove, and Fred Williamson. That's right, this one's a blast from the past, guys. VFW kind of exists in its own world. It shows us a psychotic gang that is hooked on this powerful new drug called Hype. Now, after they don't get what they want, they start to transform almost into monstrous, crazy people. A line is drawn when they chase a young girl into a local VFW where a bunch of old soldiers have had it with these punks. Guys, this is a great movie. It totally accepts what it is. It wants to be that great B film, that great exploitation film from the late 70s. It uses terrible effects, great acting from some of our favorite stars of all time, and it really puts together a solid and fun horror film that has years and years of rewatchability. Guys, let's take a look at one of my favorite fun films of 2020, VF. W. Oh, Lord. Oh, there you go. You've been at this, haven't you? I have. Uh-huh. To us. Still here. Still here. You know where you are, kid? In the uh, VFW post. How about we close the bar down early tonight? What do you got going on? The best birthday that Freddie ever got. It's Q&A time, kid. You see, the problem is that me and my old friends are probably gonna die tonight unless you help us out to understand what's happening here. You steal this? Foz killed my sister, all right? This, though, it's all he's got his whole life. V-F-W. What is that? Veterans of foreign wars. Good. Soldiers are good at dying. There's only one satisfactory solution, and that is we get our product back, and each of you die. You were a soldier. So are we all. Let's act like it. We set a perimeter. We make our stand. You'll all die very, very slowly. You last. But what are we gonna do? Do it. Because you make a mistake. I'm gonna cut your heart out. You and me both know this ain't the only option. We can push Miss Teen USA right back out to the way she came in. It's for you that we're doing all of this. I, I never asked for your goddamn help, Gramps. The second you walked through that door, we were duty bound to help you. Let's go. Number five, Possessor. It's a science fiction psychological horror film written and directed by Brandon Cronenberg, proving once again that that body morphing horror apple has not fallen far from the tree. The film stars Andrea Risborough, Christopher Abbott, Tuppence Middleton, Sean Bean, and Jennifer Jason Lee. Possessor shows us an alternate reality starting in 2008 and shows us the life of an assassin who can jump into different people's bodies that are close to her targets, making it much easier to take them out. Of course, everything goes haywire. She gets stuck in the body of someone who is fighting back, which unexpectedly puts her and everyone she knows in extreme danger. Now, you might say Possessor's a little light on horror, but it's so interesting and visually, it just has that horror atmosphere, similar to something like Scanners or maybe even Videodrome, where you can't say 100% that it's horror, but everything about it smells like a horror movie. All right, guys, let's take a look at the trailer for Possessor. You have a very special nature, one we've worked hard together to unlock. Results 
are normal. Anything you want to flag? No. No, I'm fine. Mom! Hi, darling. How was your trip? Dull. Extraordinarily dull. Our next contract's a big one. The target is the CEO of the largest operation in the U.S. He'll be binding to Colin Tate. We can't afford any mistakes on this one. Ready? What's with you today? What do you mean? I'm in place. Can we help you? Finish this. What are you doing? I can't pull the trigger. I need to know. I need to know what she's done to me. It's become a danger. Where is she? Come out or I'll do it! Sometimes, that small thought is all it takes to lose control. At number four, Color Out of Space. It's an American science fiction Lovecraftian horror film directed and co-written by Richard Stanley, based, of course, on the short story The Color Out of Space by H.P. Lovecraft. It stars Nicolas Cage, Jolie Richardson, Elliot Knight, and Madeline Arthur. In the wake of his wife Teresa's mastectomy, Nathan Gardner, played by Nicolas Cage, moves his family, including children, Lavinia, Benny, and Jack to his late father's farm. One night, a brilliantly glowing meteor crash lands in their front yard. Little do they know it, but this will not only change their lives forever, but the very existence of mankind. Color Out of Space is a weird little film. At first, you think it's going to be based around a crazy Nicolas Cage performance. He just finished doing Mandy in 2018 when he started making this film so you kind of expect that crazy Nicolas Cage thing to happen but it never really does to that extent because the story takes over here and it's actually very good it reminded me a lot of Stephen King's The Tommyknockers you know guys this film actually surprised me a great deal it's shot beautifully the story was great and the acting was on point let's take a look at the trailer for Color Out of Space Look at this. All those years in the big city, we finally got out. We're living the dream. Maybe it is a dream. And then everything just blew up. Big flash, like a pink light. Or actually, I don't even know what color it was. It wasn't like any color I'd ever seen before. It looks like a meteorite. I mean, it's radioactive. I mean, it's from space, right? Meteorites are generally no more dangerous than ordinary rocks. How can something that big just disappear? Did you plant those? No. Ward, you come here for a sec. Oh, God. What are you doing? Shh. He's talking to me. Who's talking to you? A man in the well. It's in the static. It's in the moisture. It's in here. It's out there. And what's out there is in here now. Everything's under control. Why are you so in denial? That thing from the meteorite changes everything around it. It's just the color. Butter burners. Can you believe me now? I don't know what I believe anymore. Okay. 
at number three, The Invisible Man. It's an Australian-American science fiction horror film written and directed by Lee wan loosely based on the novel of the same name by H.G. Wells. It follows a woman who believes she is being stalked and gaslit by her abusive and wealthy boyfriend even after his apparent suicide. Ultimately, she deduces that he has acquired the ability to become invisible. The film stars Elizabeth Moss, Aldous Hodge, Storm Reed, Harriet Dyer, and Oliver Jackson Cohen as the Invisible Man. You know, guys, we've seen other versions of the Invisible Man over the years. Uh, Hollow Man and even Chevy Chase's humorous version of it. So when they got to this one, I was kind of like, what else are they going to do with the Invisible Man? How are they going to make this scary? How is that possible? Well, they totally pulled it off. And it makes sense that when you see Elizabeth Moss in this and all the talent that surrounds the film, these people wouldn't have gotten involved unless they believed it was going to work. It's a a great script. I think it's well-paced, even though it does seem a little slow at times. It always builds to a great moment. And uh, I enjoyed the ending quite a bit. Let's take a look at the trailer for The Invisible Man. I see an attorney representing Adrian's trust. I'm required to read a prepared statement. Cecilia, although our relationship was far from perfect, I thought that you would talk to me rather than run away. Are you okay? Open the door! What happened to him? He cut his wrists. Per his final wishes, you're getting $5 million. Contingent, of course, on the fine print. It can't be ruled to be mentally incompetent. It just doesn't make any sense. What? Adrian wouldn't kill himself. Listen, you're getting your freedom back, okay? Don't let him haunt you. Hello? He was a sociopath, completely in control of everything. He said that wherever I went, he would find me, walk right up to me, and I wouldn't be able to see him. Are you okay? Someone sitting in that chair. I found something that can prove what I'm experiencing. You need help. Adrian is dead. I went to his house today. He's not dead. I have a pile of ashes in a box that would disagree with you. He has figured out a way to be invisible. Only thing more brilliant than inventing something that makes you invisible is coming up with the perfect way to torture you, even in death. Adrian's true genius was how he got in people's heads. Don't come any closer. Hey! I'm not crazy. Please listen to me. You're saying the person trying to kill you is in the room right now, but we can't see him? He's listening. Where are you? Where are you? Show yourself! Come on! Do it! There you are. At number two, The Platform. It's a Spanish social science fiction horror film directed by Galder Gazul Urusha. The film is set in a large tower-style vertical self-management center, which is basically a prison. Its residents, who are switched every 30 days between its many different floors, are fed via a platform, which initially filled with food at the top floor, gradually descends through the tower's levels, stopping for a fixed amount of time on each cell. The system inevitably leads to conflict, though, as the residents at the top levels get to eat as much as they want, with each level getting only the leftovers from the previous one. The film stars Ivan Masagwe, Antonia San Juan, and Zorian Edgelor. And I'm about 100% sure I only said one of those names half right. (laughs) These actors really do give some great performances, though, guys. It's one hell of a movie that just stuck with me for days and days after watching it. I highly recommend it. Let's take a look at the trailer for The Platform. 
Hay tres clases de personas. Los de arriba, los de abajo, los que caen. El hoyo. Sí, el hoyo. ¿Y usted sabe en qué consiste esto del hoyo? Obvio. ¿Comer? ¿Qué vamos a comer? Lo que le sobra a los de arriba. gente abajo. <risa> Dentro de poco habrá menos. ¿Que era una persona? Pues claro que era una persona. ¡Es que nadie va a hacer nada! Es que todo el mundo comiera solo lo que necesita. La comida llegaría al nivel más bajo. El hambre desata la locura. Tiene buen corazón. No creo que sobreviva usted mucho tiempo. At number one, I have Thin Chronic. Now I think, guys, this for me was my favorite film of 2020. Period. It's an American science fiction horror film directed and produced by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. And they've done some great work, but this is easily my favorite film of theirs so far. The movie stars Jamie Dornan and Anthony Mackie, and they play two paramedics whose lives are ripped apart after a series of horrific deaths are caused by a new designer drug called Synchronic. Guys, this film is incredibly hard to explain. It has elements of a drug horror film. It also has themes of time travel. I almost feel like telling you anything else about it would kind of ruin the impact of the film. So with that being said, let's just go straight to the trailer for my favorite film of 2020, Sin Chronic. You know, they say we see everything once in this gig. Pretty sure we've never seen this. They think they need help. It's inoperable and never starts your own radiation. What's going on with you? I want to know that there's meaning in the things I do. Watching this, I'm probably trying to convince you of something pretty unbelievable or I'm dead. I'd do anything to get her back, but this is, I mean, the next dose could kill you. There are things that are far worse than death. <laughs> What happened to him? They're not returning. It's gotta be me. You can't deal with reality. Yeah, because you're a fucking <laughs> The clock keeps ticking down. The time is an illusion. fans that's my top 10 favorite horror films of 2020 
Guys, this was our 20th episode. We have done a top 10 for every year from 2001 to 2020. And I hope you will join us on New Year's Day as we unveil our top 10 horror films of the last two decades. And just as an added bonus for this episode, guys, I did do a top 75 list of my favorite horror films from 2020. I started out with a list that was way over 200, cut it down to about 167 films I thought that were worth mentioning, and then I cut that all the way down to my top 75 horror films of 2020. Now I'm going to put numbers 11 through 75 just as a list in the description guys so go check out those films too and guys as always we will talk to you the next time we've got something worth talking about bye